All right. Who wants to be a sheep? I'm sorry, you're on the wrong side. <laughs> you think about that when you sit down in the mornings. You need to look at the readings and plan out where you're going to sit ahead of time, right here. <coughs> the gospel of our Lord, the good news of our Lord. He's going to separate some, the sheep from the goats, right? He's going to separate the people of the kingdom like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Because... In Jesus' day, it was commonplace for a shepherd in his flock to have both sheep and goats, right? The sheep were referred to, and it's all through the Old Testament, right? If you listen to the readings this morning, three out of four readings this morning talked about the people of Israel being sheep. Three out of four readings recommend that you be a sheep, right? Sheep were held by the, the shepherds as well as goats. And sheep were white, and goats were brownish, off-white, dark, black, some other color than white. You get the connection, right? Sheep, white, righteous, part of the fold of God. The reason that I wear a white robe, the acolytes wear a white robe in the morning, is we're covered by Christ, right? You don't see me, you see Jesus. This all shows you Jesus rather than me. You're supposed to say yes to that. Yes. <laughs> right? So, it's good for us to be sheep, but the sheep would be separated, the sheep from the goats. Okay, I have a question for you. Can a sheep become a goat? Or can a goat become a sheep? We could argue this all morning, right? Darwin gave a theory of evolution that one species could evolve into another. Somehow, though, I don't think a goat's going to become a sheep or a sheep's going to become a goat. It's just not going to happen. So why is there this separation between the sheep and the goats? Besides the fact that they're different animals, why is it not like Ezekiel, where Ezekiel says that he's going to separate the fat sheep from the lean sheep? Right? Ezekiel, at least, is saying that God is going to compare sheep to sheep, not sheep to goats. What's the point here? See, we want to look at this passage, and it is in the end times. We look at this passage as being an end time passage where Christ will come at the end of the age and sit in judgment over all of us and separate the good from the bad and then send the good into the kingdom and send the bad away to the, to the fires of hell that was prepared for the devil and his, and his demons. Right? That's what we think this passage is talking to us about. There's a few problems with that, though. Number one, Jesus separates the two groups before he even tells them what they did. There's no judgment beforehand. You're separated and put into the group that you're going to be in before there's even judgment. Right? Jesus separated the sheep from the goats, and then he told them what they did. And to the sheep, he said... Those of you that are blessed, come into the kingdom that has been prepared for you that you are now to inherit. How does one get an inheritance? Can you do anything to get an inheritance? You can do something to lose an inheritance, but you can't do anything to get an inheritance. It's given by the person because they want to give it to you. You can do absolutely nothing to get it. You can do something to lose it. But you can't do anything to get it. And he said to the blessed, come into the kingdom that has been prepared for you. Inherit the kingdom. Get it. Because it was already prepared for you. And you get it. Not because of anything that you've done. But when you saw me naked, you clothed me. When you saw me hungry, you fed me. When you saw me thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When you saw me in prison, you visited me. In sick, you visited me. What's the point about prison and being sick? See, the thing is, we don't get that. Because when we're sick, when we're real sick, where do we go? We go to the hospital, right? When we're in the hospital, we paint an arm and a leg, but we get food every day and we get care and they bring us nice clean clothing and they change our linens on our bed for us and they do all these things for us, right? It's all taken care of. And when you go to prison here, what do you get? No, you get more than nothing. You get a nice room. I mean, you are captive, 
you get a nice room, you get to play, you get a library, you get an exercise, you get TV, you get clothing, you get food. Prison in Jesus' day and being sick in Jesus' day is much like going to prison in Mexico. What happens when you go to prison in Mexico today? You get nothing, nothing, unless somebody brings it to you. They put you in a cell and you get nothing unless somebody brings it to you. You get no food, you get no clothing, you get nothing. In Jesus' day, when people were sick or in prison, they were drained on their family because they couldn't earn any income. And the families would immediately disown them. They wouldn't go to visit them. They wouldn't go to see them. If you were sick, you were out on your own. They pushed you outside the city because nobody else wanted to be sick. And nobody wanted to have anything to do with you. These are the people that nobody wants to have around them. And Jesus is saying that you took care of these when nobody else would. You're blessed because you did the things that I would have done. But are you blessed because of that? Are you sheep because of the things that you did? And are you goats because that you kept score and thought you were doing the things right when you needed to do them, but you didn't actually do it to the people that you needed to do it to? Right? Does it have anything to do with the actions that we take? Because that's really what this text points us to, right? That if we do the right things, we can earn our way into heaven. But go back to that word I said a little bit ago. What did Jesus say to the blessed? Come into the kingdom that you have inherited. It has absolutely nothing to do with what we've done. See, there's a difference here in, in the question that is asked. Because you see, the, the interesting part to this whole story, this whole judgment, this whole separation of the sheep and the goats, is that both groups are surprised by the fact that they're in the group that they're in. The sheep are wondering when it was that they saw Jesus naked and gave him clothing and, food, and hungry and gave him food and thirsty and gave him something to drink. And the goats are wondering the same thing. When did we see you and not do those things to you? They're not surprised by their actions. Right? They're surprised but not because they did those things or didn't do those things. They're surprised because they didn't see Jesus there. We didn't see Jesus in the homeless man or in the man in prison because we don't expect to see God there. We don't expect to see God in the lowly. We expect to find God sitting on a throne. And our story today even perpetuates that for us, right? Jesus comes with his angels and where does he sit? On a throne. Because that's where we want to see him. We don't see him in the face of the stranger or the person hurting. Because it's all about the questions that we ask and why we live our lives. You see, the sheep knew that they were loved by God. And the goats probably knew that they were loved by God too, but they thought that there was more that they needed to do. So the question that the sheep were asking themselves is, since God loves me, what can I do? Because God loves me, what can I do because of that? And the goats were asking, what can I do to make sure that God still loves me? Or what can I do to get God's love? Do you see the difference in the focus of the question? It's the same question, because they both understand the love of God. They both understand that God loves them. But it's the difference of the question that we're asking. Since God loves us, what can we do? Not what can I do to earn God's love, because as Lutherans we believe, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for we are saved by grace through faith, not by our own works, so that no one can boast. And verse 10, we are saved by grace through faith, not by our own works so that no one can boast for the works that have been prepared for us by Jesus Christ from the beginning. God prepared works for us to do, works to those who need us to be there for them. What can we do because God loves us? What can our lives be because God loves us? 
Not what can I do to earn God's love. Right? It's not the right question. It's all about the perspective that we look at this from. This passage is not about the end of times. It is, in a way. But it's more about us living our lives in a way that show forth God's love and understanding to us. Because God so loved the world that He sent His only Son, so that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. We've been given the love of God, and therefore what are we doing about it? How does your life show forth God's love in this world? Are we more concerned about ourselves? Or are we more concerned about what God is calling us to do and to be in this place? Because if we focus on Christ, if we focus on the cross, we're going to see Jesus in the face of the stranger. We're going to see Jesus in the face of the homeless. We're going to see Jesus in the face of the rich. There's an interesting twist for you. Who is it that needs God the most? Those that focus on what they have or don't have more than they focus on God. If God is not the primary thing that you're seeing, we need to reevaluate where we're at and what we're doing. Because that's being in a place where we ask, what can I do to earn God's love? And there's nothing that you can do to earn God's love. There's nothing you can do to earn God's love. But I guarantee you this morning that God loves each and every one of you. And because of that, how is your life going to be different? So this morning, it's about the question. And the question isn't, if you were to die tonight, would you be a sheep tomorrow? The question is, you're alive today and loved by God and given so much and been blessed with so much in your life. How are you going to live and show the world that love that God has given to you? Amen.